Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The purpose of the mixed dentition analysis is to estimate the space available in a child's dental arches for the eruption of succeeding permanent teeth permanent teeth are measured in this analysis to predict the widths of the unerupted cuspid and bicuspids. The lower incisors are chosen because they are erupted early in the mixed dentition and they're in the front of the mouth and easy to measure. The basic instrument necessary for this procedure is a tooth measuring gauge. In this case a Bowley gauge with the tips sharpened and the outer bows cut off to make it easier to place inside the child's mouth. A tooth size prediction chart and a worksheet are all necessary. Briefly then, the analysis involves measuring the width of the lower incisors at their mesial diameter, determining the space needed for incisor alignment in each quadrant, the available space by measuring inside the child's mouth, predicting the needed space for eruption by going to the eruption prediction chart, and computing the space left for molar adjustment or the amount of crowding or spacing in each quadrant. To demonstrate the use of the mixed dentition analysis in a clinical orthodontic examination, we're going to go through a procedure on a patient. Step one then is to measure the four lower incisor teeth. Starting on the right side and you'll notice on your worksheet that the patient's right side is to your left or in other words the patient's right is as you look at it in his mouth. We'll start with the lower right lateral incisor Again, we're measuring at the widest mesial distal diameter. We try to place the Bowley gauge so that it goes down the long axis of the tooth. Okay, the width for the left or right lower lateral incisor is 6.4 millimeters. The right central incisor width is 5.7 millimeters. On the left, the left central incisor is 5.4 millimeters. The left lateral incisor is 6.2 millimeters. The next step is to determine the amount of space needed for the alignment of the lower incisors. Although this is not exactly the case as seen in our patient's mouth, this chart of a lower arch as seen from the occlusal will demonstrate some things we should remember. When lower incisors are crowded, as they are on, this, on the right side here, they will occupy more space when aligned than they do clinically now. And as we see on the left, if the teeth are spaced, they will occupy less space when aligned. Let's determine the amount of space then in our patient's mouth. On the right side, the sum of the lateral and central incisor widths is 12.1. We take this measurement, set it on the Bowley gauge, and measure from the midline to the patient's right. The midline is determined best usually by placing the mesial tip of the Bowley gauge at the crest of the gingival, gingival papilla between the two incisors. In our patient's case, this coincides with the midline as we see in his teeth. We lay this measurement out and find 
that the distance needed for the alignment of the incisors falls just barely on the primary cuspid. On the left side, the distance is 11.6 millimeters. We set this again on the Boley gauge, and again, measuring from the midline, find where this point will be. In this case, it's just about on the distal of the lower lateral incisor. Step three is to determine the amount of space available for the eruption of the cuspid and bicuspids. To do this, we measure, again as seen on the diagram, from the point determined in our patient's case, just on the mesial of the lower right cuspid, back to the mesial of the lower first permanent molar. On the left, the point was nearly at the distal of the lower left lateral incisor. Here we measure from this point, again back to the mesial of the first permanent molar. For our patient then, place the bully gauge tips at the mesial of the first permanent molar and remembering the point, in this case on the primary cuspid, we find the space available in our patient's mouth is 24.3 millimeters on the right side. Mm. On the left, this same space, our measurement is 21.2 millimeters. The next step is to use the probability chart and predict the sizes of the cuspid and bicuspids. To do this, we need to sum the four lower incisor widths, in this case, 23.7, and using the lower half of the probability chart. This diagram is a representation of this chart. You can see that we cross on the top line on your chart until we find the sum of the lower incisor widths, 23.7. Moving across at the 75% level, we move across until we find the predicted widths of the bicuspid and cuspid as 22.6. We choose to use the 75% level for prediction because it has been found to be most clinically practical. In other words, 75% of children whose lower incisors total 23.7 millimeters will have bicuspid and cuspid combined widths of 22.6 or greater. Let's record 22.6 then in the predicted size line. Notice the prediction is the same for both the right and the left sides. Final step then in the mixed dentition analysis is to predict the space left. On the right side, we see that it's a positive 1.7 millimeters. However, on the left in our patient, it's a negative 1.4 millimeters. This means that on our patient's right side, there's 1.7 millimeters of space left over after these three teeth erupt. However, on the left side, our child is 1.4 millimeters short of space. To finish the mixed dentition analysis, the procedure is identical in the upper arch. The four upper incisors were measured and it was found that the right lateral incisor was 6.7 millimeters wide, the right central 9.5, left central 9.4, left lateral 6.7 millimeters. The space 
then needed for incisor alignment on the right was 16.2 millimeters, on the left, 16.1. Measuring in our patient's mouth on the right side, the space left was 20.5 millimeters, on the left, 24.1. Using the upper part of the probability chart then, the widths of the upper bicuspids and cuspids were predicted and found to be 23.0 millimeters, again the same on the right and left. Remember that upper bicuspid and cuspid widths are predicted using sums of the lower incisors in the upper arch. The last step then in the mixed dentition analysis in the upper arch is to subtract these figures. We find on the right minus 2.5 millimeters, and on the left, positive 1.1 millimeters. These four figures then represent the amount of spacing or crowding in each quadrant of this child's arch after the cuspid and bicuspids have erupted. Another way of looking at it is that these figures represent the amount of space in each quadrant left for molar adjustment. In summary then, for the mixed dentition analysis, it is necessary first to measure the width of the incisors, lower incisors, determine the space needed for incisor alignment, compute the available space, predict the needed space for eruption of the cuspid and bicuspids using the probability chart, and compute the space left for molar adjustment. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.